Hi, kid, and welcome to Kid Time Story Time. Oh, I see you're going to read this book, are you? You're going to scare the children. No, I'm not here to scare the children. Why would you say such a thing, Maleficent? Because I've read the reviews about this book, and this book scares children. I see I've had my effect on you. <laughs> is that true, storyteller? Are you going to scare me with this story time? She sure is. Wait a minute, listen to me. I'm listening. I'm not. This book is about a girl who develops a bad case of the stripes, but not for the reason that you think. It's really because she re I don't I don't want to hear I don't want to hear it. You just want to scare people. <sighs> do you think I'm here to scare you, Corny the Unicorn? No. Then do you want to listen to the story? Okay, but you're not going to scare me? No, there's going to be a very good lesson here about why this girl develops these stripes, and it's a very important lesson for you to learn. Okay. Don't listen to her. It's scary. Uh, I believe you. Okay, shall we begin? Do you want to snuggle up next to me? Okay. All right. A bad case of stripes, which looks pretty scary, I admit. But there's a reason why Camilla Cream, is not a cool name? Camilla Cream develops these stripes. Well, here's Camilla in her natural, non striped state. And so the story begins. Camilla Cream loved lima beans, but. She never ate them. All her friends hated lima beans, and she wanted to fit in. Camilla always worried about what other people thought of her. Today, she was fretting even more than usual. It was the first day of school, and she couldn't decide what to wear, what to wear. There were so many people to impress. She tried on 42 outfits. Oh, Lord, that is way too many outfits. But... None seemed quite right for Camilla. She put on a pretty red dress and looked in the mirror. Then she screamed, Ah! Her mother ran into the room. Ah! Oh my heavens! She cried. You're completely covered with stripes! This was certainly true. Camilla was striped from head to toe. She looked like a rainbow. Wow! I've never seen such a thing! Whoa. Me neither. Well, Mrs. Cream felt Camilla's forehead. Do you feel all right? I, 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 I feel fine, Camilla answered, but just look at me. Well, you get back in bed this instant, her mother ordered. You are not going to school today. Well, Camilla, as you can imagine, was relieved. She didn't want to miss the first day of school, but she was afraid of what the other kids would say. She also had no idea what to wear with those crazy stripes. I mean, what goes with stripes? Polka dots? Plain color? Paisley? Well, that afternoon, Dr. Bumble came to examine Camilla. Most extraordinary, he exclaimed. I've never seen anything like it. Are you having any coughing, sneezing, runny nose, aches, pains, chills, hot flashes, dizziness, drowsiness, shortness of breath, or uncontrollable twitching? Uh, no. They feel fine. Well, then, <laughs> I don't see any reason why she shouldn't go to school tomorrow. Here's some ointment that should help clear up those stripes in a few days. If it doesn't, you know where to reach me. And off he went. Well, the next day was a disaster. Everybody at school laughed at Camilla. They called her Camilla Crayon and Knight of the Living Lollipop. Well, she tried to act, you know, to try her best to act as if everything were normal. But when the class had the Pledge of Allegiance, her stripes turned red, white, and blue, and she broke out in stars. Wow. It was a very patriotic look. Too bad it's not the 4th of July. Oof. Well, the other kids, they thought this was great. One yelled out, Let's see some purple polka dots! Sure enough, Camilla turned all purple polka dotty. Someone else shouted, Checkerboard! And a pattern of squares emerged on her skin. Soon everyone was calling out different shapes and colors, and poor Camilla was changing faster than you can change channels on a TV. Oh, she's a chameleon. She just is everything that people want her to be. Hmm. Do you think that that is maybe a symbol, a metaphor, to use a fancy word, for something else? Let's see where the story's taking us. Well, that night, Mr. Harms, the school principal, called. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mrs. Cream. 
I'm going to have to ask you to keep Camilla home from school. She's just too much of a, a distraction. I've been getting calls from the other parents. They're afraid those, uh, those stripes may be contagious. Well, Camilla was so embarrassed. She couldn't believe that two days ago everyone liked her. Now, nobody wanted to be in the same room with her. Welcome to the club, Camilla. <laughs> oh, thank you, Maleficent. Well, her father tried to make her feel better. Is there anything I can get you, sweetheart? He asked. No, thank you, sighed Camilla. What she really wanted was a nice plate of lima beans. But she'd been laughed at enough for one day. Hmm. She really cares what other people think, doesn't she? This is like a curse. You care what other people think, and then you become this living mosaic of color. Hmm, well, yes, I see, Dr. Bumble mumbled when Mr. Cream phoned the next day. Oh, I think I'd better bring in the specialist. We'll be right over. About an hour later, Dr. Bumble arrived with four people in long white coats. Big Big glasses, I might add, too. Uh, he introduced them to the creams. Oh, this is Dr. Grop, Dr. Sponge, Dr. Cricket, and uh, Dr. Young. Then the specialists went to work on Camilla. They squeezed and jabbed and tapped and tested. It was all very uncomfortable. Well, it's not the mumps, concluded Dr. Grop. Or the measles, said Dr. Sponge. Definitely not chicken pox, put in Dr. Cricket. Or sunburn said Dr. Young. Hmm, try these, said the specialist, and they each handed her a bottle filled with different colored pills. Oh, take one of each of these before bed, said Dr. Grop, and then they file out the door. Goodbye, doctors. Goodbye, specialist. Thanks very much, because look at what you've done now. That night, Camilla took her medicine. It was awful, and when she woke up in the morning, she sure did feel different. But when she got dressed, huh, Funny, her clothes didn't fit right. She looked in the mirror, and there, staring back at her, was... Ah! It's okay, it's okay, it's just a book. Whoa! I know, she was a giant, multicolored pill with her face on it. Well, she kind of looks like my, my gummy bear vitamins that you gave me in the morning. Yeah, she sure does. A little bit delicious. Yeah. <laughs> well, <clears throat> let's see here. Dr. Bumble rushed over as soon as Mrs. Cream called, but this time, instead of those specialists, he brought the experts. Dr. Gord and Mr. Mellon were the finest scientific minds in the land. Once again, Camilla was poked and prodded, looked at, listened to. The experts wrote down lots of numbers, 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 and they huddled together and whispered. <laughs> Dr. Gord finally spoke. It might be a virus. He announced with great authority. Suddenly, fuzzy little virus balls appeared all over Camilla. Or possibly some form of bacteria, said Mr. Mellon, and out popped squiggly little bacteria tails. Or it could be a fungus, added Dr. Gord. Instantly, you know what happened. Camilla was covered with different colored fungus blotches. Well, the experts looked at Camilla, then at each other. Oh, we, we need to go over these numbers again back at the lab. We'll call you when we know something. Well, the experts didn't have a clue, much less a cure. By now, the TV news have found out about Camilla. Reporters from every channel were outside her house, telling the story of the bizarre case of the incredible changing kid. Soon, a huge crowd was camped out on the front lawn. From WCKO Channel 5, the full-color tattoo man was also on hand. And somebody selling hot dogs. Hey, it's quite a party out there. Like a carnival outside Camilla's house. Woo! Except she's not happy about it. The creams, that's the family, were swamped with all kinds of remedies from psychologists, allergists, herbalists, nutritionists, psychics, an old medicine man, a guru, even a vegetarian. Oops. Vet veterinarian, which is not like a vegetarian. Each so-called cure only added to poor Camilla's increasingly strange appearance until it was hard to even recognize her. What? That's her? Oh, that doesn't even look like her. I know, she doesn't even look like a human anymore. She kind of looks like a tree or a, huh, a garden. Kind of pretty. Yeah, it is pretty, but you know, obviously you don't want to look like a tree if you're not a tree. Yeah, no, of course not. So, here she is prodding roots, berries, crystal feathers, a 
a, a long furry tail? Wow, this is bizarre. Well, nothing anybody recommended was working. Wow, this room has really come to life. Oh my gosh, the room is not a room, it's Camilla. One day, a woman who called herself an environmental therapist claimed she could cure Camilla. Close your eyes, she said. Breathe deeply and become one with your room. I wish you hadn't said that, Camilla groaned, and she started to melt into the walls of her room. Look at that, her bed is her mouth, her nose is a dresser. And then these paintings became her eyes. The therapist, well, that very helpful therapist screamed and ran from the house. What are we going to do? Cried Mrs. Cream. It just keeps getting worse and worse. And she started to cry. I hate it when mom starts to cry. Oh, this looks like a nice little old lady. Maybe she can help. At that moment, Mr. Cream heard a quiet little knock at the front door. And there she was, this little old lady, just as plump and sweet as a strawberry. Excuse me, she said brightly, but I think I can help. Oh, she went into Camilla's room and looked around. My goodness, she said with a shake of her head. What we have here is a bad case of stripes. One of the worst I've ever seen. She pulled a container of small green beans from her bag. Here, she said, these might do the trick. <gasps> Are those magic beans? asked Mrs. Cream. Oh my, no, there's no such thing. These are just plain old lima beans. I bet you'd like some, wouldn't you? She asked Camilla. Now Camilla, poor Camilla here, wanted a big heaping plateful of lima beans more than just about anything, but she was still, still afraid to admit it. After everything she's been through, she's still afraid of admitting she likes lima beans because her friends make fun of her. Well, that's pretty silly, but well, that's how she felt. Yuck, she said, obviously pretending. No one likes lima beans, especially me, said Camilla. Oh dear, the old woman said sadly. I guess I was wrong about you. And she put the beans back in her bag and started towards the door. Now Camilla was watching the old woman walk away and she's thinking those beans would taste so good and being laughed at for eating them was nothing compared to what she was going through. True story, sister. She finally couldn't stand it. Wait, she cried. The truth is, I really love lima beans. Oh, I thought so. The old woman said with a smile. She took a handful of beans and popped them into Camilla's mouth, which currently is her bed mattress. Mmm, said Camilla. Oh, I wonder what's gonna happen. I'm gonna turn the page. Are you ready? <gasps> Ta da! Wow! She's back! She sure is! Wow! The branches, the feathers, the squiggly tails all disappeared. The whole room was swirling around, and when it stopped, there was Camilla, back to normal. I'm cured, she shouted. Yes, said the old woman. I knew the real you was in there somewhere. And she patted Camilla on the head. She went outside and vanished in the crowd like a fairy godmother. Afterwards, Camilla wasn't quite the same. Hmm. Some of the kids at school said she was weird, but she didn't care a bit. She ate all the lima beans she wanted, and she never even had a touch of the stripes again. Well, so if, if I am to understand you correctly. I'm not listening, by the way. Okay. Uh, if I am to understand you, storyteller, um, she was, Camilla was afraid of admitting that she liked lima beans because she didn't like to be different from her friends. Is that right? That's right. She was so afraid of being herself and being true to her likes and the things that what made her her. For example, at the beginning, she was just horrified about fitting in at school and tried on 42 dresses and was worried about what other people would say and she wouldn't try uh, lima beans because her friends hated them and she knew she loved them. Well, she worried so much about what other people thought that she stopped recognizing herself. <gasps> oh, I get it. Yeah. She stopped being herself. She started being a reflection of what everybody else wanted. So if somebody said stripes, she became stripes. If somebody said 
polka dots, she became polka dots. If somebody said purple, she became purple. Exactly. So she stopped being Camilla. But once she accepted that she could be her own self, boom, stripes went away. Exactly. So what have you learned here? I've learned that this is a terrible book. And I've learned that you have to be yourself or you stop recognizing yourself and then these strange expert doctors start poking at you. Exactly. Well, except maybe for the expert doctor part. But yes, exactly. You have to be true to yourself and that's perfectly fine. It's better than being that thing. Exactly. I still don't like the book. Okay, Maleficent, but you don't really like anything. That's true. Well, kid, I hope that you liked the case of the stripes and that you don't develop it. And if you do, what's the cure? To be yourself and maybe eat some lima beans. If you like them. <laughs> See you next time, kid, on Kids.